I think it's live now. There we go. <coughs> okay. Hey, Hope City Church family. It's uh, Friday, December 11th at 7 p.m. And this is 7 at 7. Uh, if you all didn't get a chance to listen to this week's uh, sermon, uh, Pastor John started a new sermon series called Hope Arrives. Uh, it was really awesome. I really encourage you to go listen to it. Uh, you can scroll down on the page and you should be able to find it there. Um, what was really exciting about this week, um, you know, the Hope Arrives uh, sermon series was was kind of twofold. It was the soft opening of Hope City Church. So uh, that's the new name moving forward. Um, we also got to hear the, the mission uh, moving forward from Pastor John. So I'm going to read that to you now. Is uh, Our mission is to share the goodness of God to bring hope and transformation in Christ. I think that's really awesome. Um, and I think Ron actually talked about this earlier in the week, you know, we have, our, our main mission is the Great Commission, right? Um, but this, kind of like the Great Commission is like an overarching mission. This is a, a part of that go commit that co-mission to, to go and to make disciples of all the, uh, of everyone. Um, so by sharing God's goodness, we can bring hope and transformation in Christ. Um, and so my goal this evening is to uh, expound a little bit more upon that. Um, you know, John did a really good job on, on Sunday breaking it into three different distinct parts uh, to share the goodness of God, to bring hope and transformation in Christ. And in order to bring the hope and transformation in Christ, it's got to start with sharing God's goodness. So, so what does that really look like? Uh, so John um, used the uh, scripture, Romans 2, 4, uh, or do you despise the riches of his goodness, forbearance, and long suffering, not knowing that the goodness of God leads you to repentance? Uh, and one thing that he, he highlighted is, it's the revelation of God's goodness that leads to repentance, not our repentance that leads to God's goodness, which I think is just so amazing. Um, and actually, if you, if you keep reading down in Romans uh, later on, just as, uh, as to really understand how much God loves us, that he poured his love out on us, I'm going to read to you Romans 5, uh, starting in verse 6 through 11. Uh, for when we were without strength in due time, Christ died for the ungodly. For scarcely for a righteous man would someone die, yet perhaps for a good man someone would even dare to die. But God demonstrates his own love toward us in that while we were sinners, Christ died for us. Much more than shall we be saved from the uh, much more than having now been justified by his blood, shall we be saved from the wrath through him. For if we were enemy, when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God through the death of his son, much more having been reconciled, shall we be saved by his life. And not only that, but we also rejoice in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we now have received reconciliation. So it doesn't just stop with that reconciliation of, of his, his death on the cross, but we get to experience so much more. Uh, one thing that, that John pointed out is, you know, when you receive Christ, all that he had is now ours. Um, so we have the amazing opportunity to, to take the goodness that we've gotten from God that drew us in in the first place, and, and share it with others. You know, as he is, so are we in the world. And part of that is, uh, Paul talks about later on in Romans, is now I am confident concerning you, my brethren, that you are also full of goodness. And that's God's goodness that we get to be full of because of the reconciliation. Filled with all knowledge, able also to admonish one another. Right? So we have the amazing opportunity to bring that goodness to help others, to help bring others into the fold. Um, and part of bringing that goodness leads to the awakening and the, and the coming alive of hope. Um, <clears throat> you know, one thing that John pointed out on Sunday is when you hear of his goodness and you see his promises, which are always yes and amen of hope and a future and blessing upon blessing and just his love poured out on us and he's not holding them back from you, your hope comes alive, right? And so I love the verse in uh, Ecclesiastes 4.12. It talks about, you know, if, if one can be overcome and two can stand against, three are not easily broken, right? And so if you turn to uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 13, I love 1 Corinthians 13 because it talks all about love and how everything that we do is motivated out of love. But at the end of the chapter, um, I'll read it to you. It says, and now abide faith, hope, love. These three, but the greatest of these is love. And I really love that love it. I've used that word a lot. I'm sorry. Is, you know, the Bible 
does a great job of, of explaining to us that God is love and God is everlasting and that love that God has for us is everlasting. That agape love, that by choice love is, is forever. Um, and, and faith, according to Hebrews, is the, <laughs> according to Hebrews 11.1, 1, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Um, and so, you know, we have a clear definition of love. That's it's who God is, is what he does, is, is who he is. Everything about him is love. And faith is that substance of our hope. But the hope in the New Testament biblical sense that we're talking about is not a willful thinking or a, oh, I, I sure do hope this happens. No, I think uh, Pastor Dana on Wednesday did a great job of explaining it. It's a positive imagination based on the word of God. Um, and so when I was looking at this week, I was really curious on what word, what Greek word is used for the word hope in this context. Um, and the Old Testament's full of, of uh, different words usage for, for hope, but the New Testament is almost all of the ones that I could find. It's the word el peace, um, which the base word of el peace is el po, and the definition of that is to expect or anticipate. So this is not a wishful thinking type hope. This is an expectation type hope. So we have, we abide in faith. God calls us. He gave us a measure of faith. We abide in hope, the expectation and love. And so part of that hope coming alive in us, when we, when we experience his goodness, that hope comes alive to us. And that hope is not a willful thinking hope. It's, a, it's an expectation to see more of his goodness and more of his character and more of who he is, which in turn causes transformation in Christ. You know, in Romans 12, 2, it says, And do not be conformed to the world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. So we experience God's goodness, and we have the opportunity to share that with people. But as we experience his goodness, it ignites hope in us. And that hope is the expectation type of hope. It's the um, directed hope. And that faith that we have that he gave us is the ammunition for the direction, which leads to becoming more like Christ, which results in bringing more people into the fold. And that's just, to me, is so encouraging that we get to be the bearers of this amazing good news. That's why it's called the gospel. Um, unfortunately, I think I'm out of time. I'm getting all, all fired up, but have a good weekend. Uh, look forward to seeing you all on Sunday. Uh, if you need anything, please feel free to reach out, and we'd be happy to pray with you. Um, but have a nice night. Bye.